Welcome back, I'm Ed Bell and in this episode we're going to talk about two things, how great melodies are made and how great lyrics and great melodies fit together. In episode 6 we looked at how successful structures are made of repeated sections and in episode 7 we looked at how great lyrics depend on a repeated hook. So it's probably no surprise that great melodies are all about repetition too. Specifically, melodic repetition is about motifs, a handful of notes that have a distinctive melodic shape and or a distinctive rhythm. Motifs can be as short as perhaps three or four notes, or as long as a whole phrase of maybe 10 or 12 notes. Great melodies are all about making the most you can out of the fewest possible motifs, repeated exactly or with subtle changes. One of the great things about music is that you can change a motif in lots of different ways and we'll still hear the connection between different versions. For example, one or more notes of a motif might be altered slightly. The motif might be transposed, it might start on a higher or lower note. The motif might be repeated with a different harmony underneath it. A motif's rhythm might be repeated though the melody is completely changed. However it happens, it's these varied and developed repetitions that make a melody unified and therefore more memorable. Let's see how this works in the opening four lines of David Bowie's Life on Mars. The first phrase, it's a god-awful small affair, has a distinctive rhythm and a distinctive melodic shape, so it's a motif. The second phrase begins exactly the same, but the melody changes very slightly at the end. Then the third phrase is exactly the same as the first, except it's up a step. So the first and third phrases are different but very closely related. And finally the fourth phrase begins like the third but ends with an extra note. This varied repetition continues all the way through the verse. In fact, the song makes a 24 bar section out of this single 8 note motif. This is an extreme example. It's rare to see a melody created out of just one motif like this, but you'll see and hear how the simple repetition helps glue the melody together into a single unit. Sometimes skilled songwriters do this consciously, but more often than not, it's a combination of conscious repetition as well as letting the subconscious brain make its own connections. If you want to know more about using motivic repetition to make a melody, there's much more in the Song Foundry ebook, The Art of Songwriting. Next, let's talk about how melody and lyrics interact together. Prosody, or word setting, is the art of combining music and lyric into a single whole. Prosody is about matching words with music that supports and enhances them, whether the music or the lyric is written first. To see how prosody works, here's the first phrase of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It's a really great matching of words and music. Let's look at three reasons why. One, the natural stresses in the words fit the downbeats in the music. As the saying goes, you don't want to put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. You want the musical accents to say somewhere over the rainbow, because that's how you'd speak the words in real life. Two, the rhythm is a reasonable representation of how you say the phrase in real life. There are no weird or unnatural pauses, like if it went somewhere over the rainbow. Three, high melodic notes or big melodic leaps emphasize the important words in the phrase. As well as stressing syllables, when we speak we tend to stress certain words more than others depending on what we mean. Are you with me doesn't quite mean the same as are you with me. In this setting, somewhere and rainbow are the most important words and they're the two words that have the highest notes. There's also a nice yearning quality to the octave leap on somewhere. It'd sound weird if, for example, the was set to a high climactic note. Again, I picked an unusually clear example to talk about here. Everything you write doesn't have to be as detailed as this, but these three principles are worth bearing in mind. Using them will help make sure your lyric and music fit together well and help make sure your lyric is understood. Okay, that's all we've got time for in this episode, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.